So where does the backswing end and the downswing begin? Should it be two separate phases of the swing? Back, down? Should it be, like I just demonstrated there, back, like a transition or pause, and down, or something else? Should be something else. So let's chat about that today and exactly what it is. Hi, I'm Peter Knight and I've created this channel, Peter Knight Golf, to help you play the best golf you can. And today we're looking at that movement that makes them the swing a continuous flowing motion that's in incredibly important to give you power and control. We're going to have a look at particularly the lower body movement and how it needs to be sequenced correctly to give you the best chance of keeping balance, keeping a good uh, a sequence of motion going during the swing and having you know all the control and power that you want. Well, maybe not all you want, but certainly maximizing what you are capable of. So a couple of checkpoints. When I set myself up at a dress, I've got my balance fairly even on both feet, or if I think of it as pressure into the ground, I've got about 50% pressure into either foot. If it's slightly out of that, it doesn't really matter because it is going to shift around during the stroke. By the time I get to this point in my swing here, so my hands are only, only at about hip height, However much pressure I'm going to have on my back foot, it's already there. So let's say that's 75% of pressure. Now I haven't shifted my body sideways to get that. Really all I've done is I've allowed my body to rotate. But at this point here, I've got about say 75% of pressure on my right foot. This is all feel. I'm not, I don't have force plates to measure it, but I know what that movement feels like and you'll have a pretty good sense of that as well uh, in case you don't have access to pressure plates, which is almost 100% of golfers don't. So, now from this point here, as I be continue to swing the club to the end of the backswing, I'm actually going to start to move forward. So that by the time I get to the end of my backswing, now I've only got about 60% of pressure on my right foot. So that backswing movement again, about 75% of pressure to here. By the time I get to the end, I've already started to move back. So the, the tricky bit here is that as my body's rotating, it also starts to move toward the target a little bit. Now, most of that drift is with my lower body. If my head moves a little bit, no big deal. Don't let it move too much, and definitely don't lead with the upper body. So we're really focusing on lower body movement and upper body staying quite stable. So turning back from this point here, as I continue my backswing, I'm moving forward. Now, when I get to the end of the swing, I've already started my downswing movement. In fact, it's in some ways I've started that downswing movement from halfway back in my backswing because my hands haven't changed direction, but my lower body has. So back to the top of the swing. Now from here, that drift that I've already begun is going to continue to a point only where my left leg is vertical. My knee's still bent, of course, but my left leg's vertical. If I drift too much, then I'll start to lose my balance. If I don't go far enough, then I'm in trouble in getting the club to, the, to get to the ground where I want it to. So now I've got to sequence the motion. So if I do it just without swinging a golf club for the moment, I'm turning my hips back without sliding one way or the other to about here, then I'll move across. So I'm turning, now turning and sliding forward and then rotating around my left leg. So turning, sliding forward, rotating around my left leg. Then if I do that, say without the, the golf club in my hands, and I get the feeling of my body's rotation, moving my arms, and now the, the swing of my arms is created by my upper body's movement. My upper body movement is created through my lower body. So now if we put all that together, and we play a shot, I've kept my center of balance nice and stable, and I'm able to produce, to produce you know, power and movement and get the shot that I want without losing balance. But that felt really, really strong through my feet because my, balance, my center of balance didn't move too much. But because I've got the order going nicely, I didn't feel like I was putting in a whole lot of effort. Practice that movement, great way to do it is to either practice with the sun behind you, so casting your shadow forward so you can see the movement with your hips, or watching yourself 
in a like a reflection or a window or a mirror so you can actually practice that movement. Do it without a golf club. Do it even with your arms across your shoulders to begin with so you're isolating the movement to your lower body and then introduce your arm movement and then introduce the club as well. You'll find that that is going to help you an enormous amount, particularly if you're one of those players who doesn't already have that movement down correctly.